Though in the midst of our storms and our trials and our tribulations, we need to have God hold us in the hollow. The very hollow of his hand. The hollow of your hand is the very center of your hand. And I want to sing that song this morning. If this is for you, then I'm singing it for you. Keep me safe until the storm passes by. In the dark.
is dealing with a form of depression. It comes on you, you fight through it, you get your breakthrough, and then it comes back again. But you always break through, you always get out of it, somehow or another. But it started when you were a young woman or a young man. It started And it always tells you that you cannot be what God has called you to be. It always tells you that your dream is never going to come true. And in, in that, you're always trying to prove to yourself and to others that you're who you are. I'm here to tell you this morning that God is going to deliver you and touch you today. I believe today if you'll stand on your feet across this building, I want everybody to stand on your feet. And in yourself, you worship God the way you worship God. If you want to lift your hands, you lift your hands. If you just want to sit there, you sit there. Well, however you worship God, worship God. I ain't here to tell you how to worship God. But I'm here to tell you that the anointed is on my life to break this thing off of you right now in the name of Jesus. And the next time that this old spirit tries to come back to you, it's going to turn around and go back the other way because it's going to know that it can't come there no more. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I command this spirit to be broken in the name Jesus, from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet. Oh God, let them know that they can rejoice in the time of this anniversary. That God, that they can rejoice in a time that things seem like it's going wrong. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you raise up them to be rulers. Oh God, to be kings and rulers, to rule over nations. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I rebuke to you, foul spirit. Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, 
if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, thank all these things. Somebody say, thank all these things. When everything is going wrong, thank all these things. And then those things, listen, what are, what are those things? What are those things? Thank all these things. Those things which you have both learned, received, heard, and seen in me do. He says, it hasn't changed. He says, you have followed me. You have seen me in many different times. The Apostle Paul said, you have seen me in different battles and different times in my walk in the Lord. He says, what I want you to do is learn to quit thinking about what you're praying about so much and think about the things that are true. Think about the things that are honest. Think about the things that are just, that is pure, that is lovely. And if there be any good report, think about the good reports of the Lord and know that God is going to come through for you. And the Lord says, and He says, and the peace of God shall be with you. Church, today I want to tell you that it's time for us to shake loose and shake these chains off of us that's helped us back for years and be what God has called us to be. He has called you to be a worker in the kingdom. He's called some of you to be teachers. He's called some of you to be preachers. He's called some of you to be oh, uh, singers. He's called some of you to be just get up and to testify. He's called some of you to support the church and the ministry of God. And the Lord says today we need to learn to be who we are in the Lord and understand that the peace of God will go with us. If we'll rejoice in the Lord, again I say rejoice. He said if you will think on these things and keep your thoughts and your mind on the good things of the Lord, the Lord said I will see you through what you're going through. Hallelujah church, there's some of you going through some things that only God can bring you out.
He says in the scriptures, be careful for nothing. But in everything, in by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known, be made known unto God. So there's somebody today in your spirit, in your spirit. Some of these lips hadn't even moved, but you prayed, and God heard it. <laughs>
in the army. He said, bind them up. He said, bind them and throw them into the midst of the fire. Oh, and the fiery furnace. Praise the Lord. He said, throw them in there. And these three mighty men came out. And they took, they took the three Hebrew children. They pounded them up. so much. Oh, that the men that threw them in, they died in the presence of the flames. They died in the presence of the flames. Church, you better be careful how you put your hands on God's church or God's man or God's Christian. You are a Christian and God said that people better be careful how they put their hands on you. He said they may bind you up. They may bind you up with, with your coat and your hands and they Sister Judy, that you can get caught up in the world, you can 
you have to go through. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 30, I'm about to close. He says, Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not clothe? Shall he not much more clothe you? O oh, ye of little faith. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or wherewith all shall we be clothed? For after all these things did the Gentiles see. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. He already knows you need these things. So when you pray for that kind of stuff, you're just wasting your time. God already knows you need that. You don't have to pray for new clothes or something to eat. Just thank Him for it. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in our as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Thank Him for it. Praise Him for it. He says, he says don't worry about what you should eat. Don't worry about what you should drink or what, you, what clothes you should put on. For the Gentiles, for the people of the world, seek after these things. He says, your heavenly bottom how He knows you have need of all these things. But listen to this. Here's the catchy part. Verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. You know what the Hebrew children was doing? That was not bound just because they were the big shots. They were already leaders in the providence. They were already leaders. That's why it made Nebuchadnezzar so mad. Because everybody else was bowing. But some of his leaders decided to do their own thing. <clears throat> they, said they decided to do their own thing. Church, listen. No, they decided to seek first the kingdom of God. The things of the kingdom. See, I much rather be a lesser of a preacher and have the anointing of my life and know that when I lay my hand on you, God's going to heal you, touch you, and deliver you. See, you come too late to tell me that God's not the healer. You know what? I've done been healed. I've done seen people healed. I've seen the miraculous. Brother, you hang around me long enough, you don't have to have that walk. The last person that was around me that had a walker, bless God, we ran to the back of the church to the front and God healed them and they didn't need him no more. Hallelujah. God can heal that spinal cord. God can heal whatever is in that hip or whatever is in that leg or whatever is in the knee or that foot. God can heal that body. Amen. God can heal you today. But first, seek ye the kingdom of God. Even though I know that God's a mighty healer and I know God can heal you today and I know God can deliver you from everything, I seek Him even above that. Some people get stuck on the healing of God. They seek the hand of God instead of the face of God. Today, church, I'm not stuck on God's hand. I'm stuck on His face. Because if I know if I've got His face, I've got His whole body. But first seek ye the kingdom of God and His righteousness. That all these things shall be added unto you. If there's no addition being to you, maybe you're not seeking enough. If there's not any addition, maybe, uh, maybe you're not in that spiritual treadmill long enough. See, you got to get on the spiritual treadmill with God. If you don't, you'll get stagnated. And you'll quit growing. And that this you will keep, uh, it, it won't be there anymore. He says, when you seek my kingdom and you seek me and you trust in me and you rely on me and know that I am in your tomorrow, your next week, uh, your next year, hallelujah. He says, then uh, I will add. Chapter 4, verse 10. I won't finish that scripture. 
He says, but I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now that at last your care of me has flourished again, wherein ye are also careful, but ye lack opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, meaning I don't, I'm not saying that I want. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am. Amen. We're with to be content in God. Amen. To be content. He said, the Apostle Paul said, I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know both how to be to abase and now how to abound. Everywhere in all things I am instructed both to be full and hungry. So what is God saying here? What, the, what is the Apostle Paul saying? He said, I have learned that there's times that I am abased and I have learned that sometimes I am abound, but I have learned that I am instructed all oh, and all times to be full, but yet keep my hunger. There's so many people in the church today Stand in me, all over the 